This lesson, 5.3, is about some miscellaneous theorems involving parallel lines. Okay, this first theorem just seems like a no-brainer. If two lines are parallel, then all points on one line are equidistant from the other line. Well, I just think of this like train tracks with ties going across them. If I have two parallel train tracks, I expect all of the ties to be the same length. Those are the wood pieces that go between them. Um, so a way we could demonstrate this is if I take a point on any point on one line and I go the shortest distance to the next line, to the other line, which is always a perpendicular, that the length of that segment is going to be the same as if I take some other point on the line and go take the shortest distance from that point to the other line, again, a perpendicular, well, probably not a surprise that these two segments would be the same length. The distances between the two lines remains constant. I think that that's pretty obvious. Okay, the second theorem is that if I have parallel lines, say three, four, it doesn't matter how many, if I have parallel lines that cut off congruent segments on one transversal, it means they cut off congruent segments on every transversal I lay across those lines. So let's say I take a blue transversal and I lay it across these three parallel lines, okay, and that it happens to cut off two congruent segments there. Well, it turns out that if I take another transversal, say I take one at a completely different angle, doesn't matter, I'll lay a green transversal across that. Well, because I cut off congruent segments on the blue transversal, then it's going to cut off congruent segments on the green transversal. I can see that the segments are longer on the green transversal because it's, it's at more of an angle, it's at a greater slant, but they're still congruent to each other. And I could take like a third one, I could put this through here, a third transversal, and again, the two pieces uh, that that divides that transversal into between the parallel lines congruent to each other. So if it's going to cut off congruent segments on one transversal, it will cut off congruent segments on any transversal I lay across it, which leads us to the next theorem. Okay, so this last theorem is that if you have a triangle and you connect the midpoints, so let's say I've got a midpoint here uh, and a midpoint here, of two sides of the triangle, so take any two sides, if you connect the midpoints with a segment, that segment has two special things about it. First of all, it's parallel to the third side of the triangle. And the second thing is, is that that segment, okay, wait, let's make sure we show that these are midpoints. Okay, and the second thing is, is that that segment is exactly half the length of the third side. So whatever the third side length is, this is half of it, uh, or I could say that the third side is twice the length of that segment. So it's half the length of the third side. So anyway, that, uh, well, we'll do some examples involving these theorems. Okay, so in this first example, I have a triangle kind of inside of a triangle here, and I'm told that x, y, and z are all midpoints. Okay, so we'll remember that. And so we'll remember that these, given that, these segments are all parallel to the third side of each, um, well, the two sides that, aren't, that don't have the midpoints on them, and they're half the length of the third sides. So anyway, the first example, if AC is 24, then what's a, uh, XY? So it's saying, okay, this whole segment down here is 24, then XY is going to be half of that because it's parallel to the bottom and it's half its length. Okay, in the next example, if AB equals K, so we're saying that this length has, this side here of the triangle has a length of K. Okay, K just represents some number. Uh, what it would mean is that this piece, YZ, is just going to be half of that, right? So YZ is going to be k over 2, or 1 half k. Okay, in the next example, xz is equal to 2k plus 3. So that's this piece right in here. And we're asked to find bc. So we know it's going to be this side here of the triangle is going to be twice the length of xz. So I could just say, well, then bc is going to be 2 times 
2K plus 3, which is going to be 4K plus 6. Okay, next we have, if AB is 9, so this big side, left side, is 9, and BC is 8, so this big side here is 8, uh, and then the bottom, oops, the bottom side is AC is 6, then it asks for what's the perimeter of XYZ. Well, each of the segments in XYZ is half of the opposite sides. So this side would be 4, half of the 8, half of BC. XY, this would be 3, which is half of AC. And this side, YZ, would be half of 9, which is 9 halves or 4 and a half. So um, that's going to add up to be 11 and a half. And another way that you could have done that is just taking, you know it's going to be one half of the sum, the perimeter of the big one, which is going to be 9 plus 8 plus 6. So it's one half of 23, which is 23 halves or 11 and a half. And then lastly, with respect to the same diagram, we're given if the perimeter of XYZ, so of this smaller triangle in the middle, if that has a perimeter of 24, then what's the perimeter of the big triangle ABC? Well, since we know that BC is 2 times XZ, AC is twice XY, and AB is twice ZY, we know that the whole thing is twice the perimeter of the small triangle XYZ. So it ha ABC would have a perimeter of 48.